And we are live. Hey friends, welcome back. It's Mike with High Intensity Health. As always, I'm excited that you are here. Today, we're going to unpack some science and connect the dots between taking exogenous vitamin D or getting it from the sun and how that impacts your immune system by way of your gut bacteria. It's a really fascinating uh, series of papers that we're going to unpack. And I want to thank my friend, Dr. Stasha Galmanek, who we had on the podcast over three years ago when she talked about this way back in 2017. Go to our video playlist and you can uh, check out that episode. But I was with her in Texas this past weekend, and she shared a bunch of articles with me that I hadn't yet really heard about, and I want to share those with you today, and, and we're going to edit those uh, that interview that we recently filmed, and you'll know about that soon enough, but uh, uh, welcome back. So let's talk a little bit more about how when you take vitamin D, what it does to the health and the composition in the diversity of your microbiome and also your immune system. I think it's a really interesting way to kind of think about the mechanism of action um, that's what we're, I know you're interested in this sort of stuff, trying to figure out, you know, how do things work? That's what we're trying to do here. Well, if I intermittent fast, what does that do to my, you know, autophagy machinery, for example? When I take vitamin D, I know that's helpful for various things, but how is it working in the body? In this series of papers that we're going to unpack today, and I'll start flashing up some studies on the screen so that you can kind of follow along and, and uh, check some of this stuff out. I think it's really interesting. One of the papers that you're seeing here is titled Dietary Vitamin D, Vitamin D Receptor and Microbiome from a, a Dr. Uh, uh, Jun Sam over at, I think, Midwestern uh, University outside of uh, Chicago. So that's one of the many papers, and she talks about this inside out control. And let me just quickly kind of define that. And this was one of our very first YouTube videos back in 2012, where we talked about how the immune system controls your gut bacteria from the inside out. So we tend to think that when you eat certain foods or take antibiotics or take probiotics or take fiber, that the only way to affect the composition of the trillions of species in your gut is to sort of from the outside in. So you, you eat something, it changes your gut bacteria, and then that causes some sort of immunological reaction. But actually what we now know is there's inside out control. So your immune system is shaping the ecology and the ecosystem of the bugs living in your intestine. And so if you, if you take immunonutrients, like say vitamin D, what you're doing is you're changing the composition of your bacteria. So you can almost think about vitamin D in a way as like a probiotic or a prebiotic because it's affecting the internal ecology and the ecosystem in a favorable manner. And uh, very, very soon, we're going to talk about this randomized, blinded, placebo-controlled study that actually showed just that, that taking vitamin D favorably changes the bacterial composition and, and thus the inflammatory tone in subjects. It's a really fascinating study. So um, before we get ahead of ourselves, let's sort of unpack uh, the difference between taking dietary vitamin D and when you get exposed and when your body makes vitamin D through sun exposure. So what you're going to see here on the screen is the two routes of sort of uh, the ways in which you would get vitamin D and, and its conversion uh, in the liver and then also eventually in the kidney. Now, why is this important? Because if you live south of Atlanta, Georgia right now, as we film this December 16th, okay, even if you get adequate outdoor exposure, the zenith angle of the sun is such that you're not going to get cutaneous synthesis of vitamin D. This is called, again, the zenith angle. You can Google all this stuff. There's a researcher that I've been following since 2006, a Dr. Garland, who's eloquently published this at length. And so just because you go and take a walk, again, if you live north of Atlanta, Georgia, go look on the map and see where you are. Uh, it's very unlikely that you're going to get cutaneous synthesis from outdoor exposure during this time of the year until about March when the sun and the earth start to, you know, and we get into early spring. That's when you might get sufficient vitamin D biosynthesis by way of the sun. I'm not saying don't go outside right now. I'm, I'm encouraging you to get outside because there's circadian rhythm, protective effects and sunlight and, you know, um, fresh air and all that is great. But you probably should be supplementing with vitamin D. And we're going to talk about why that is. And from and you know that there's this thing called the C word that's circulating in various communities. And there is an inverse correlation between levels of vitamin D uh, and severe outcomes. In fact, one study, I don't want to get into the 
I don't want this video to be censored, but one study actually showed it was a meta-analysis of 26 different retrospective studies um, with individuals that were uh, hospitalized with the C word, you know, that virus that's circulating. Well, what they actually found was that uh, individuals that had vitamin D insufficiency um, were 64% more likely to end up having a severe disease compared to people who did not have vitamin D insufficiency. So again, this is a meta-analysis of 27 different studies. I'm working on a long blog post that I'll link in this video and then in the podcast show notes so that you can have access to this. Uh, really interesting stuff. And again, multiple studies have shown this now, 27 uh, studies at this point. So um, anyway, you have this great visual. That way you know where you're getting vitamin D when you take it, what it's doing, etc. Okay, let's get into, and we'll just quickly talk about this because we're not, it's going to be a little off topic as we get further into this conversation. There's an intimate connection between vitamin D uh, sufficiency and vitamin D levels and classic cardiometabolic risk factors and cardiometabolic diseases and obesity. Now, uh, why is this important? Well, again, we have this C word virus that's circulating in communities. We know that one of the most common risk factors for severe disease and poor outcomes is obesity and the presence of cardiometabolic risk factors. And so one nutrient that has been shown that when you are, uh, when you have insufficient levels of this nutrient, which is what we're talking about today, vitamin D, there is a, a correlation between vitamin D insufficiency and reduced insulin sensitivity, vitamin D insufficiency and altered glucose homeostasis and blood sugar dynamics, vitamin D insufficiency and in adipose tissue imbalances and inflammation. So as you can see on this visual that's on the screen right here, is the vitamin D receptor and classical metabolic, um, you know, like PPAR gamma, these are so-called transcription factors and intra-signal, intracellular signaling factors, um, there's a connection there. So I want you to remember, it's not just gut bacteria that we're talking about, there are other systemic non-musculoskeletal effects linked with vitamin D. Now, why do I say non-musculoskeletal? So you're, it's likely that if your doctor is over the age of 40, when they went to their medical school training or your nurse practitioner or your PA, when they went to medical school and they learned about vitamin D, they learned about vitamin D as this sort of nutrient that is sort of relegated to calcium homeostasis and affecting you know, uh, bone mineral resorption and uh, osteoblast, osteoclast and all those sort of things. But now we know that there's so much you know, extra non-musculoskeletal functions that vitamin D participates in, particularly in the immune system, because your B cells, your macrophages, and your T cells have the vitamin D receptor. Now, remember, the T cells are intimately connected with the C word virus that's circulating throughout our communities. So we know that if we can affect and prime our you know, innate immune system and influence our adaptive immune system, then we might have so-called better outcomes when it comes to this C word, if you catch my drift. So uh, important stuff to remember and share with friends and family. Uh, the mechanism of action, I think, is, is really interesting. Okay, so where is this information coming from? It's been published since 2015, specifically the data on the connection between vitamin D and your microbiome. Really fascinating stuff. To be honest, when I first heard about this, and it was a conversation in 2017 with Dr. Stasha Galmanek, a neurologist. She has one of our more popular uh, podcast interviews that's on our YouTube channel and over in iTunes. And she started to share this with me and said, you know what, during this conversation, gosh, vitamin D is so important for affecting the composition and health of the gut bugs. And when those gut bugs are happy, then people can start sleeping better. And I, I kind of thought, well, she's stretching this a little bit. Is there any data I remember thinking during the conversation, lo and behold, there is data, you know, and multiple studies have come out since then. So again, Stasha, you're way ahead of the curve here. I want to thank you for sharing this information with us because it's very, very powerful. Uh, a lot of people struggle with sleep and have anxiety and neurologic issues and depression and all of this. And if your gut bugs are imbalanced, it, it affects your brain and it affects your mood and affect and, and so forth. So uh, really interesting stuff. Now, let's get into... Oh, this uh, this visual is great. You got to take a screenshot of this. I think this this is awesome. You know, a lot of people are concerned about the health of their gut lining 
For example, you know, the holiday season is upon us. You might be socializing with friends and family, uh, maybe even colleagues, coworkers, things like that. I, I sure hope you do. Uh, I think social connections are something that are missing, uh, especially in 2020, and we need to maintain uh, the health of our social relationships uh, in a safe fashion. But we know that, you know, for example, if you drink alcohol, or if you participate in excessive uh, high-intensity exercise, or you take things like NSAIDs, which would be ibuprofen and over-the-counter uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, that you can compromise the barrier of your intestinal lining, and that can lead to increased so-called permeability or cause in, uh, leaky gut. And, it, and there's some interesting connections between the vitamin D levels and gut bacteria uh, integrity. So I thought this visual was great. I just wanted to share this with you. But um, let's unpack this study right here. This was an interventional clinical study published by, you might recognize one of the names on here, Michael Hollick. Michael Hollick, I believe is at Boston Children's, Boston, uh, he was at Mass General for a little bit. It says right here, um, yeah, anyway, uh, he's been studying vitamin D and he's been a real pioneer at helping us better understand the vitamin D science and some of the, uh, for example, uh, he used to have medical students, medical school students um, go on the rooftops in, in Boston and at Mass General uh, in, in the winter and then, you know, have them sit outside for several hours during the middle of the day and found out that, gosh, well, the zenith angle of the sun is insufficient to cause cutaneous synthesis of vitamin D. So therefore, you need to get it from supplements. So he was one of the first ones to kind of show that. So we're going to get into, into this study. But first, friends, I do want to let you know that these conversations are brought to you by our very own prior client that I created to help people and my clients just like you optimize their health. So we have this great formula called essential fatty nutrients that pairs two essential fatty nutrients, one of which we're talking about today, which is vitamin D, also paired with vitamin K, vitamin K2 specifically, and even more specifically, because there's many different forms of vitamin K2, the MK7 form. So if you would like to optimize these two essential fatty nutrients that are synergistic and help support whole body health, please go over to our website, myosciencewithanx.com. That's M-Y-O-X-C-I-E-N-C-E.com. And what you can do is just right on the, on the top, there's a green button that says save on new formulations and updated formulations. Click on that and you will see this essential fatty nutrients formula and you can use the coupon code podcast to save at checkout. Again, over on our website, myoscience.com. This is a really unique blend and a customer favorite. So let's get into this study. Again, the title of this, if you're just listening to this right now, bless your heart, if you're driving or working out or what have you. The title of the study is The Effects of Various Dosages of Oral Vitamin D3 Supplementation on Gut Microbiota in Healthy Adults, a Randomized Double-Blinded Dose Response Study. This dose response study, uh, you know, it's not just semantics. I think this is a really interesting aspect of this particular randomized blinded study because what they actually showed is there is indeed a dose-dependent response and impact on gut bacteria when it comes to vitamin D repletion. Very fascinating stuff because, again, maybe this is just me. I've sold supplements my entire professional career. And many people, when they think about taking supplements, vitamin D is one, we get focused on systemic absorption, okay? When it comes to things like berberine, when it comes to alpha lipoic acid, when it comes to glutathione, everyone is focused on mis missilization, uh, emulsification, uh, time release delivery systems. But what if our dietary supplements, and this is something I've been saying for a while, what if we don't focus so much on systemic absorption and we think about this organ that we've often forgot about, which is our gut bacteria. And it could be that your your vitamin D levels are interacting directly with gut bacteria and changing, changing gut ecology. I don't know if that's exactly the mechanism here, but that's just something to consider is don't always focus on maximizing absorption. Uh, and buying the most expensive glutathione or mesolized or emulsified or enteric coated or whatever. Sometimes, you know, a lot of studies have actually shown that how things that you're ingesting are affecting your health or in a positive or favor unfavorable manner is by way of your gut bacteria. So just food for thought. Uh, for example, one drug that's used and widely effective for the 
the improvement in blood sugar regulation and management of diabetes is called metformin. You've heard about this. I know you have. Many of you have also probably heard about berberine hydrochloride. Well, guess what? Both of those two compounds, both metformin and berberine hydrochloride, are very poorly absorbed, yet they're very effective. So it's like, well, how, how is this working? It's changing the gut and gut hormones. So again, just food for thought, but let's dive into the study. And unfortunately, I just have a printed copy of this, so you're not gonna see some of the charts that I'm going to verbally articulate to you right now. But one of the charts that I think is really interesting, well, I'll show it to you, maybe you can see it. It might be a little bit hard. Um, and so this is the baseline characteristics of individuals in this study. And what they found is that there's a direct correlation between baseline vitamin D levels and levels of a, a very healthy and protective gut bacteria genre known as Acromenzia. You may have heard about this. We've talked about this at length on this podcast over the years, Acromenzia mucinophilia. This is a genus and species of bacteria that is linked with protective mucus formation and maintenance in your intestines and, you know, in the small and large intestine, namely the large intestine. So acromenzia is a genre of bacteria and you're, the subject's baseline levels of vitamin D correlated with levels of acromenzia, which was interesting. Then they, they, they varied the dosages of vitamin D in the study, starting at 4,000 up to 10,000 international units. And what they found at the end of the study is there was indeed a dose-dependent response uh, in terms of vitamin D repletion uh, throughout the course of the study. Eight weeks, of was this, that was a duration, it was two months uh, long they noticed that there was a correlation between the dose of vitamin D and the favorable improvements in acromenzia. They also noted favorable improvements in a genre you've heard about before, bacteroidetes. Not only bacteroidetes, but a genre that I'm not too familiar with known as parabacteroidetes. So again, we have two favorable changes uh, in basically three genre of bacteria. And moreover, they noticed the bacteroidetes to firmicutes ratio was favorably changed with vitamin D supplementation at the end of this eight-week study. So again, really fascinating stuff. For some of you, you're just like, tell me the details. What do I need to know? Well, what do you need to know? You need to start taking, especially this time of year, between four and around 6,000 international units per day of vitamin D. Now, you probably should work with a practitioner, test your levels. I always recommend testing, not guessing. You want to see where you fit in. Um, but most people can't really go wrong, I would say. Just knock on wood and, and you know. Again, I've never seen anyone have super physiologic levels of vitamin D that are affecting calcium homeostasis at 4,000 IUs in just thin per day. But always, we always recommend testing. Work with a practitioner that knows what they're doing so you can make sure that you're, you're checking. You should be checking your blood work at least once a year anyway. So that's what they found. Now, why does all the stuff even matter? Well, the, the signature of the bacteria is linked with disease. And so uh, we know that the bacteroidetes to firmicutes ratio is linked with adiposity. It's linked with belly fat. Uh, we know that, and I wasn't too familiar with this in the context of uh, gut inflammation and uh, IBS and bowel disorders, but let me just read to you, a, 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 this is page uh, 554 of the study. Um, okay, uh, parabacteroidetes supplementation after eight weeks of vitamin D supplementation. Uh, uh, sorry, let me go back. Uh, it, it has been shown that the bacteroidetes and parabacteroidetes were suppressed in patients with active inflammatory bowel diseases compared to normal controls. Now, again, what they noted at the end of the eight-week supplementation of vitamin D, they saw favorable improvements in bacteroidetes and parabacteroidetes. And so um, what... What other studies have shown in the past is when there is a dearth or lack of these two beneficial genre of bacteria, again, bacteroidetes and parabacteroidetes, that that is linked with gut inflammation. So the vitamin D was shown to improve the, these two genre along with the acromenzia and then a reduction in firmicutity. So these are like four kind of things. And they go on to say that the likely mechanism is that these bacteria help maintain the expression of regulatory T cells. We've talked about this before. Now, I just want to connect the dots because I know you're interested in, these, in the science. So regulatory T cells, um, and I guess it's not good to talk about COPS in a favorable manner right now for some reason, but if you think about regulatory T cells, they are like the policemen of your immune system in the sense that they're they're breaking up riots and 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 you know non-peaceful protests which would 
be chronic inflammation. So regulatory T cells are affecting your inflammatory tone. We know that a risk factor for severe and poor outcomes for the C word virus is, guess what, is, is alteration, is chronic inflammation and probably a loss of immune tolerance. So regulatory T cells are helpful in the context of reducing chronic inflammation. Now, this is an interesting connection between metabolic issues and, and obesity and being overweight and metabolically dis, metabolic dysfunction is regulatory T cells are influenced by leptin. Leptin and regulatory T cells have an inverse correlation. So the more leptin that you're expressing from excess adiposity and being overweight and so forth, that is linked with a dearth or a lack of expression of regulatory T cells. So this is how uh, obesity and being overweight can actually drive immune and autoimmune-like phenomenon in the body. Okay, um, what I'm going to do, friends, I see quite a few of you here, which is great. Uh, I'm going to get to some of your live questions. And uh, again, I just want to thank all of you for being here. If you're enjoying this content, please hit that like button. Thanks for sharing this with friends and family. And let's get to some of your live questions. Um, <clears throat> Joshua Webb, thanks for being here. Joshua says, uh, maybe take eight to 10,000 international units per day, uh, short term. Yeah, so with when it comes to vitamin D, um, you know, you can do higher dosages on a short-term basis. If you feel like you have a cold coming on, we did launch a video yesterday just to kind of let you all know. Uh, you know, it was about 10 days ago or so. I felt like, gosh, I'm coming down with something. So I started taking my routine of iodine, uh, vitamin D, vitamin A, zinc, and just really kind of snap out of it in a day. So um, these are things that that you, um, you know, can can you know, supplement with and, and do a little bit of a higher dose uh, periodically. Um, okay, so what other questions do we have here? Um, Patrick says, cannabis, great at reducing inflammation and preventing cytokine storm. Yeah, um, it's interesting, Patrick, that you mentioned cannabis because there's a connection between uh, the endocannabinoid system tone and vitamin D levels and your gut bacteria. So it's really interesting. G Spike says, what up, Mike? Uh, what is up? Good, good that you're here. Uh, Nicole says, my doctor just prescribed me 50,000 international units for 12 weeks only because I am so deficient in vitamin D, but I will retest at 12 weeks and then reduce to 4,000 I use. Um, yeah, Nicole, I think taking 50,000 a day is pretty high. Um, I don't know that you need to go a full 12 weeks just to get your levels up, you know, but, but again, what's the downside? Uh, you, you do want to monitor your serum calcium because that can be, um, that can be too much. Um, so um, Trolls says it's pronounced genre, uh, not genre. You know what? So everyone, has, when it comes to microbiology and taxonomy, um, there's a bunch of different ways to, to talk about uh, things. Um, I'll never forget an expression that my, my uh, first microbiology teacher told me back in 2002. Um, if you don't know how to pronounce something, just say it with confidence, okay? So we could say genre or we could say genre. Um, there, there, there's a lot of different ways to talk uh, about things. I just say uh, genre, um, so that's just how I how I do it. Um, if that's not the the uh, y you know way to pronounce it, I apologize. It's just ingrained in my head um, after after uh, microbiology class and studying biology. Um, so maybe whoever taught me taught me wrong, and I apologize. Um, JS says, uh, so great and refreshing to hear someone talk about, um, the immune system with most doctors of late telling us, um, it's weak and effective and hardly needs to be mentioned. Yeah. You know what? Um, when it comes to the C word thing that's, that's going on, there's a lot of interesting, um, stuff. And, um, one of the, one of the retrospective studies about vitamin D, uh, got a lot of negative blowback by the, by the medical community, which to me is a little bit surprising, but, um, yeah, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sh quite sure why, why that would be and why people would be upset that others are talking about a nutrient that can uh, prevent severe outcomes. But uh, that's just the world we live in. Okay, uh, Miji Matthews says, how about 35,000 international units of vitamin D? Is that safe? Um, would you want to, I don't recommend taking 35,000 IUs of vitamin D for an extended period of time. If you've never taken vitamin D before and you're hearing about this C word thing um, and you live in Minnesota, you could do 35,000 IUs for a week, 10 days, but but I would certainly scale it back. Um, you, 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 know, you certainly can't overdo nutrients, right? You can have too much water, you can have too much air, and you can have too much vitamin D. So, um, you know, uh, now, 
Uh, is taking that for 10 days going to harm you? Probably not. But I would not do that for 12 weeks. I mean, that you can certainly overdo this. Um, and so, the, and plus, it may, may be unnecessary to take that much. Um, so anyway, uh, thanks for the question, Matthew. But again, I just want to exercise caution. I think, I think going slow and steady on, you know, there's no point in, you know, you know, causing perturbations and down regulation of receptors and doing all this stuff. You know, start out at four to 6,000 I use. Um, that's why we created with Myoscience, our brand. Uh, it's, it's a 5,000 international units of uh, inter- vitamin D. Most, stu- most of the studies, we're kind of splitting it in the middle. Most of the studies in humans on vitamin D have been either at 4,000 I use or 6,000, okay? So great question. Um, Dudo says, how's your sauna? All right, so I owe you all a sauna, a DIY sauna build-out video. So if you if you are used to listening over on iTunes and you're not really sure what I'm talking about, uh, I am building a, a sauna using a classical wood-burning stove to fuel it. And our, we're, we're, we've approached this rate-limiting step where I, I put a deposit on the sauna stove and we're not going to get it till early February. So anyway, um, I'll have time to edit these videos and get them out to you. But uh, it, it's all enclosed. It's covered. It's watertight. I have Tyvek and roofing on it. But um, I haven't done the interior part. I'm going to slowly do it. But great question. Thanks for asking. Okay, Nick says, uh, that doesn't surprise me, Medical Mafia. Uh, yeah, I'm with you, Nick. Uh, interesting stuff here. Rob Bacon, what's going on? Rob Bacon says, using the C word is a good way to uh, get slapped in the face by a woman. <laughs> uh, Rob Bacon, I agree with you, man. Um, be careful not to use that four-letter C word for sure. Um, Joshua Webb, I live in Florida and know that some people that mega dose of vitamin D knowing their levels get issues. Uh, yeah. So if you're getting sun exposure and vitamin D you can from supplements, you can overdo it. It's a great question there. Um, three Card Monty says, I take, 50, is it 50,000? No, it's 5,000. I use uh, vitamin D daily. Um, and my D level is 64. So that that basically confirms um, what we were just talking about. So uh, 3D, Three Card Monty. Um, hope you're taking our essential fatty nutrients because it's a great formula. Okay, uh, Margaret uh, Lefontante says, uh, difference between D2 and G3. Yeah, so it's tacitly implied when we're talking about this, we're talking about vitamin D3. Uh, although in the medical community, vitamin D2 has been used for a long time, it's not the same thing. Uh, so let's, we're, when we're talking about the all of the clinical studies, for the most part, that have been conducted on vitamin D that are showing favorable outcomes are using vitamin D3. So vitamin D2, forget about it. Don't don't use it. Don't don't do it. I know it's patented and like I can say, I think it's like a medical food or a drug, but it, we're talking about vitamin D3, and that's what you want. Okay. Um, so Leah says I had terrible candida overgrowth and am currently anemic low magnesium, zinc, and potassium. I am sorry to hear about that. Leah, I would work with a practitioner that um, understands gut health that can help you. Okay, um, this is a great question here from the Caucasi, I think is how they pronounce their uh, YouTube handle. Does vitamin D deficiency impact blood sugars? Okay, so um, what I'm going to do on the YouTube is is go over to this study right here, a potential linking between vitamin D and adipose and metabolic disorders. So absolutely, uh, this was one of the things that I'll put it in the show notes when I uh, have time to update it later on this evening, um, is one thing that you need to understand is there has been a ton of data going back as early as 2007 connecting the dots between vitamin D insufficiency and alterations in glucose homeostasis and glucose metabolism. So absolutely, there's a connection between blood sugar dysregulation and vitamin D insufficiency. So great question. Um, uh, Stefan says, any comments on vitamin D receptor and glyph- uh, is it uh, glyphosate connection polymorphism? Yeah, I, I don't know about that. We've we've had Stephanie Seneff on our podcast before. Um, you know, she, I don't think she talked about vitamin D and glyphosate connections, but but I'm not. Maybe there's new data I don't know about. But uh, bottom line, you want to avoid <laughs> exposure to glyphosate. And uh, where is it coming from? It's coming from grains and um, and unfiltered water as well. So um, definitely don't don't get that. Um, what are your thoughts on STOSS therapy? I don't know what that is. I am sorry. Um, yeah, Joshua Webb uh, has a great a great point here on um, 
what's the difference between vitamin D2 and vitamin D3? And uh, vitamin D2 is derived from plants and vitamin D3 is derived from animals. Uh, and as is always the case, generally speaking, um, when animals consume animal products, they're getting um, the nutrients that are most um, bioavailable and effective for, for animals. And you're, you are an animal. Uh, so just um, remember that. Uh, Nick May says, uh, how do you know if you have a candida overgrowth? Yeah, uh, Nikki May. Um, great question. This would be done via stool testing, um, most likely. So you can look for the uh, the antigens uh, in the stool. So Doctor's Data offers a great stool test. I would check them out um, and work with the practitioner. Okay, uh, Miji Matthews says, uh, can you explain again the connection between acromenzia and taking vitamin D supplements? Yeah, so uh, here's, a, here's the connection. Uh, acromenzia, which is the genre uh, of uh, a healthful uh, bacteria, uh, is, is correlated in a dose-dependent fashion with vitamin D levels. So higher, higher vitamin D, higher acromenzia. <clears throat> so great questions. Um, friends, <laughs> so Dudo says, what? I'm an animal? I know, I know, it's crazy. Uh, friends, as always, Thank you for being here live. I'm grateful that you were here. Thanks for listening to the replay. Thanks for tuning in over in iTunes. Uh, if you enjoyed this podcast, I would be honored if you could just you know hit that like button over on YouTube. Leave us a comment. Let me know how we're doing on these live sessions. And what I'm going to do in the show notes is put links to the research in a blog so that you have access to this, so that we can spread this message because vitamin D is a supplement that we should all be taking, especially right now, and it's really affordable. I would also be honored if you would check out our essential fatty nutrients because it's very affordable and synergistic and I put it together to help people like you and my clients, my family, my friends. So um, thanks for being here. My throat's getting dry for some reason, but we'll catch you in a future video or podcast down the road. Bye now.